Hey, Star Wars fans. Uh, welcome back again. Uh, thanks for checking out Joey and I real quick on that brief little recap of the book of Boba Fett, uh, chapter seven, uh, in the name of honor. It's Joe again in the pilot seat. Welcome back to Rule the Galaxy. We're going to do part two now, the, the bigger part, the big show. That was the preamble. That was the, the opening act. This is the big show right here. Uh, so again, follow us at Rule the Galaxy SW on Twitter. Uh, email us at rule the galaxy sw at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube at just rule the galaxy. We're starting off with just a few of these great co hosts tonight, and we'll add more here in a little bit. Uh, we've got one of our regular crew members, and um, we've got a special guest. So, I'll, you know what? Before we get to the special guest, I'll go out and say hey to my cousin Alfie. How, uh, how are you doing, Alfie, now that we're finished with the book of Boba Fett? I had to isolate myself today from other people as much as possible because I just know I was annoying as could be. <laughs> I was so hyped about this episode and I've been waiting to talk about it, you know, all day long. Well, we're here. We're, we're, we're going to have some fun. And to add to that fun, our special guest. Now, D-Doc will be along in a little bit and he's one of our regular co-hosts, but our special guest tonight we spoke with him a few months ago, and he was kind enough to say, hey, when we get to the book of Boba Fett, feel free to invite me back. The one and only Mark Anthony Austin, who, as everybody knows, played Boba Fett in the A New Hope uh, special edition uh, back in, what year was that, Mark? Well, the release was 1997, but the shoot date was 1994. Talking by 94, 1994. <laughs> Well, we are, we are so excited to have you back. And before we were getting on the show, we were talking about how my son's doing some things in the entertainment industry and media. And I told you he was 28. And you, I believe, said you were 28 when you put on the suit for Boba Fett? Yeah, when, when I put the suit on for Boba Fett, 28 years old. Wow. Because that was how old I was in 1994, <laughs> obviously. Being born in 66. Wow. But, um. Yeah, that was life changing. And I always say that 27, 28 is when your, your life kind of goes off on a tangent. So, um, yeah. That's it's awesome. Been, and, and a whole new life. And for those of you watching on YouTube, I will let you know Mark is, is donning the, the Boba Fett gear and he, he's got his helmet by the side, but it's obviously not always easy to hear him in the helmet. But I'm sure at some point in time, he <laughs> might don the helmet and, and be really cool for us here. But, um, yeah, we're really excited um, and, and so thankful again to have you back because, um, you know, Alfie and I are just two very big Star Wars fans that have spent our entire life involved with it and interested in it. And to have someone like yourself that's been involved with it and, and so many other things, uh, it's just great to have you here. What, it's funny, I spoke with my kids after the last time you were on and I let them know not only were we discussing Star Wars, but we were discussing one of their favorite movies, which was Casper. And, and you had so much work in Casper. So before we even get to that, it cracked me up that here we were talking about Star Wars and they were, they were like, he did what? He was with, he helped make that happen with the mouth and the, and the ghost. I said, yeah, th this is the guy right here. So Enzo really said cool. the same thing. We were talking about at dinner tonight and I was like, yeah, he was in, you know, the special edition. And I was telling, you know, him, you telling us the story about Casper. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> he worked on Casper. But there was, there was like two periods in my career. There was my animation period mm -hmm. when I did all my Disney movies and Casper and New Hope. And then uh, 2009, I switched over to cinematography and designing movies. So whole sequences of movies. So uh, my, my career is story and cinematography and breaking down exactly what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So, yeah, I know was why I was invited because I was in the suit, but you actually got someone that does this as a career, helping you break down this story and uh, look at it kind of cinematography from a cinema. Ta cinema, cinema it's cinema. too late in the day. <laughs> too late in the day. Well, the I'll, I'll tell you whatever. what. We we've been doing a weekly show. We've had some great guests on for the for episodes one through six. I mean, we've had some people who were deep into star wars lore and history just you know other podcasters uh authors from star Wars, the star wars universe so we've had some multiple people in for chapters one through six but we're looking forward to talking about the finale chapter uh seven tonight but i wanted to get your recap maybe 
Okay. Obviously, before we go to chapter seven, what have you thought about this series and the character of Boba Fett? You, I mean, you're asking my opinion. Yes. I just want to make it very clear about the opinion thing because some people get so rolled up when this is my opinion. You have your right. opinion. I respect your opinion. You're asking me what mine is. I'm going to tell you. Sure. Don't get mad. Okay, get that out of the way. Right. <laughs> so this is my opinion. Let me rewind. We go back to the last episode of season two of The Mandalorian and we get this book of Boba Fett thing, right? Mm -hmm. At that point, I had, you know, umpteen uh, episodes of awesomeness. I was like, just give me more of this. Just keep, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Right. Anyway, so episode one comes along and it uh, was, it didn't impact me the way it did the first episode of both seasons of mm -hmm. Mandalorian where they really kind of like, whoa, oh my goodness, where are we going with this story, you know? And you're just like, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm invested 100%. I didn't get that, and I was kind of disappointed. And for me, maybe it was because I would have loved the cro in chronological order. I would, loved, I would have loved three episodes of just the Tuscan Raiders, just him living with them, learning with them, you know, really building it up. But, but, but mm -hmm. I would have had more. Give me more of that. But it wasn't episode, by well, episode three had come and gone, and I still hadn't really kind of been given my sure. same sure. thing as I had before, right? Then episode four happened, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. Well, there we're going now. This is, okay, this, this is going somewhere now. This is going somewhere. Then episode five was like, what? What, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? Like, I maybe I'm old fashioned, but if you're going to call it the book of Boba Fett, I expect to see Boba Fett. <laughs> I just expected to see him, you know? Right. And the fact that he wasn't in there, it kind of bothered me at that point, right? So anyway, I was like, okay, well, I'll let it go because he's probably going to be back the next. And then, you know, if you blink, you miss him in the next one. Oh, yeah. Blink. And I was like, what the hell? You know, so at the end of the sixth one, I was like, okay, you better deliver, guys. Better deliver. I'll, 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 I'll buy it. I'll eat all of this as long as you deliver. And, man, they delivered. In my opinion, I, I, I think they delivered. They, like, gave me everything, you know. I, it's all the things I love. It's everything. Right. I love. I've, got, you know, I've got my Guffy stick in here, but. It's like I wanted a Western and I got a Western. I didn't want, uh, I didn't want, because the other one's more kind of based on the Japanese, mm -hmm. you know, the Seven Samurai and Samurai. Man of Cub or whatever. And so, but this one, I wanted a different feel and I wanted the, the Western and he delivered the Western. So, you know, I, I'm upset I'm not a bounty hunter anymore. I was looking forward to my next bounty hunt. <laughs> I was really looking forward. I enjoy them. And so the fact, you know, it's like, oh, I, I wanted to see him do a bounty hunt just once in the book and then decide maybe, you know what, why am I doing this? Why am I a pawn for idiots, idiot bureaucrats? And then he decides, I wish they'd, I wish they'd restructured it a bit, from, you know, look at it from my story, my cinematography. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't say that word tonight. Right. Cinematography standpoint, you know, I well, just would have liked. I would have liked it to build a slightly different way. I I think the whole series. Yeah, I think. But um, pay off, pay off. No, no, you're good. I I think um, I think everybody went into this, and and let's face it, there were a lot of fans in the first three episodes who were saying, "What is it we're getting here? Right? We're yeah. we're expecting it to we're be worried." Yeah, they're expecting it to be, okay, we know the six or seven minutes he had in the original trilogy. Let's let's build off that. Let's make him more of that character. And instead they said, well, we think you all kind of know that character. So we're going to we're going to build something else along with it. And, you know, if you, if you didn't go into it with an open mind, a lot of people probably did get turned off. But I, I do think that number four was a flip of the switch. 
uh, you know, and you knew once you got to episode four, okay, we're going in a different direction and, yeah. and we're going in, we're, there's a story coming down the pipe. Right. And, yeah. and so leading into seven, yeah, I definitely think that was, that was the way it went. Alfie, you know, I think you were of the same opinion on some of those things, right? Like you, you wanted to see that kick ass and take names bounty hunter, but instead we got this guy who was learning how to have a family how to be a part of something how to fight with a stick how to fight with yeah. a stick yeah um, finding watermelons you know in the sand exactly exactly to me it was like i read just to start off i really liked this series but it totally was not anything i was expecting no me and it coming off of the mandalorian it was like reading to me like the two towers i don't know if you you, you know the lord of the oh, rings yeah. That book is like two books, you know, sandwiched together and you get so invested in one story and you switch to the next and you expect it to be like the first half of the book you read. And you you're reading and reading and reading. You're like, oh, man, I want to get back to the story. And then before you know it, you're hooked on that one and you have to go back and reread it because you missed half of it. Waiting on it to be the Mandalorian season three or whatever. And you kind of miss the point of what they were doing in those first few episodes, going back and rewatching it and not having those expectations. I enjoyed it a heck of a lot more the second that's, time. That's what I'm thinking. I think the, the rewatch, the more I watch it, the more I'm going to love it. Mm-hmm. And I give some of the things that bug me or irk me, uh, but um, you know, I, I was, was super worried that they would make it, you know, a complete catastrophe. I, I was worried when they announced they were going to make a movie. I was like, oh my God, what if they do it wrong? Mm-hmm. There's like nine out of 10 possibilities they can mess it up. And one out of 10, they'll get it right. They have to get it right. And and they didn't, I don't, don't think they got it necessarily like dead right. But I'm happy with what we got. It's much closer to kind of like what I was hoping for than, it could have been. I mean, this is almost a bullseye. This is the one that's around the 25 yeah. points. Yeah. Go ahead, Alfie. And we all got thrown off by those two episodes with the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to someone today about it. You know, they were complaining, you know, well, this is the book of Boba Fett. And I said, yeah, but when you read a book, there's lots of chapters that don't have the main character in them. But eventually at the end, what you're reading comes back to the main character and it was called the book of Boba Fett. So there can be some expectation that it might be, you know, framed, you know, in the style of reading a very long novel. And, and I, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, um, Alfie's been talking about this for quite a while. This, this series. Okay. We got the Mandalorian. And like he said, the first two seasons, okay. It was like, okay, we've got a plan and, they're going to be like this and they're going to fit in this row and everything is going to come out to a clean ending at the end of each season. And, you know, and so we're expecting that same setup with the book of Boba Fett. Right. And then it comes out and it says, we're going to try something different. And, and instead it's going to be all depth. It's going to be all background. It's going to be things to fill and make this character a deeper character. I'm hoping actually that the future series, the, the Kenobi, the, the Ahsoka, the Andor, I'm hoping they do the same thing. Actually, I I want to kind of see that depth for those first two, three episodes of these series. I want to see building and then finish it off like we did. Go, you know, go all all out on those last three or four episodes. But um, and we'll say hi to D Doc in one second here. But but um, yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing that that beginning of we're going to give you enough of what you need on all these characters to bring this all together in the future. All these characters are going to feed into one storyline and uh so I, i'm excited about it so d doc are you are you live and listening right now yes i am good good welcome welcome in and, and as you can see we have alfie we have our special guest mark anthony austin who uh hey, doc. He's, he's he's wearing his uh, boba fett gear which is appropriate i, I saw it right <laughs> when i got on hey um be, before look he's even done and the helmet. oh gosh he's fully geared up <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. fresh off watching right now. I uh, really, I, I, I had a late uh, start to watching it tonight, and yeah, the uh, 
it, uh, so literally i just finished credits just rolled got the laptop ran down here got ready so no yeah, worries it can no be worries. crazy with kids sometimes <laughs> well, while while we're getting everybody all settled here before we step right into to episode seven uh i will say something that we've been talking about for quite a while one news item uh, that, that came up this week the high republic is creating a guidebook for the all the new high republic comics novels all that it will be out in october of this year so for those of you who are checking out the high republic books comics everything else i've been saying all along man it would really help if i had like a guide to look at while i'm reading or listening yeah this, I'll be waiting to restart then until that comes out. Yeah, so I, so I just could not keep up with it. Mark, have you have you checked out any of those? I mean, it's, no. it's I think you have to be you know, like you're a cool Star Wars fan. We're nerdy Star Wars fans, so we you know we're allowed to jump right in and be all the way nerdy <laughs> on these. Um, but it it it's something. It takes a little time to get used to. It's good stories with good characters, but they're not. It's not original trilogy characters. Not a prequel trilogy. It's something totally different so you i've been saying forever we need a guidebook i need to be able to see what this is all about and put it together yeah. so yeah so that was just one quick thing that i thought i'd throw out there and be, before we jump right into uh book of boba fett guys we, we got one more bit of news today um it's a big one it's a big one and i think i was super excited about it we knew it was coming but to see that poster to see that that laid out with Kenobi out in the middle of the desert, um, May 25th, going back to 1977, May 25th, the original Star Wars Day. Um, I can't, I tell you what, I couldn't be more excited. That show has got me, um, I, just like the Book of Boba Fett for Alfie, the Kenobi series for me is, man, it's calling my name. I'm ready to go. What, what are you guys' thoughts? Any expectations or just, man, let's just get to it? Thoughts I can't here. wait to get to it. <laughs> you know, like I said today, just like with any Star Wars, I mean, we'll just admit it. Our expectations go through the roof. You <laughs> you, you tell me Ewan McGregor's coming back and Hayden Christensen, they better be, you know, on some beam fighting with lightsabers and lava and, you know, the battle of the heroes in the background. That, just be honest. That's what we all want, you know, and are expecting it. It's not going to happen. We got to dial it down a little bit. You're just like with this you're going to get some episodes in the beginning giving some backstory yeah i, I agree uh d doc or or mark any thoughts on upcoming kenobi the, the way i look at it it's only 10 rule the galaxy episodes away so think about it in <laughs> podcast episodes it's not that far away <laughs> no I, i'm really excited i mean just to see the poster and see a date there's been so much speculation and everything. Oh, it might get pushed back, everything. And it's like, here's the date. It's coming out in a couple months. You know, I can wait a couple months for that. We've been waiting long enough. Okay. Mark, are, are you much of a, a Ewan McGregor or Obi-Wan Kenobi, Alec Guinness for that matter? I would just Obi say, run, Luke, run. <laughs> what I will say. <laughs> Now I and I like I can't I could eat this stuff up you know and it's Tatooine you know and like I said I could have spent easily four episodes with those Tuscan Raiders I I I loved all that stuff but um, this is this is good. the beginning of Phantom Menace I wanted to just see more of Jedi's doing their stuff mm -hmm. two Jedi's doing their stuff just watch, watch them do the mission I'll just be along for the ride like cops you know I don't need a story even just more of this and when uh uh you know that ended so quickly i didn't we didn't really get i, I, I would have liked the first episode to be just an episode of them doing stuff together so that at the end you there's more of an impact when qui-gon dies you know whatever oh, yeah but i just wanted to do i'm just hoping that this we get to see you and mcgregor do the stuff that was like kind of phantom menace the beginning like just jedi's doing day-to-day -day business if they use a, use a lightsaber so be it and watch out you know more of that i'm i'm super stoked i i'm glad everybody else is too i think hearing the interviews that ewan mcgregor has done and now seeing the love that hayden christensen is getting uh that that he was lacking during the prequels and now now receiving it's it's i'm all in let's go may 25th can't get here soon enough uh, but you know what, guys? We've talked enough about a little different bit of everything. Uh, we're going to go. Go ahead, Alfie. Sorry. 
yeah, before we get started. Yeah. 100%. I loved this episode, but I have one huge problem with it. And I hit on it today in our group chat. And that's the fact that at the end of this episode, I cannot go into a store and buy anything Book of Boba Fett. And uh, it's, it's yeah. everything's a year away before yeah. it's even released to be able to buy online. How, how is there not a, you know, Boba Fett and a Rancor on a store shelf right now? A Mando in, you know, the Naboo Starfighter. You know, the, the five different Boba Fett's, all the side characters. How is this not possible? I Do don't you know. know. How, how many times we're going to see Boba Fett on a Rancor in the next year? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on how many pieces of artwork, uh, models, 3D printed figures? It's going to be insane. But you it, can't but, tell me that I'm not the only person that would max a credit card today <laughs> if there was a book of Boba Fett display in target right now with all of these figures and i'm not talking black series i'm talking stuff i can bring home to my daughter get out of the box and we play with right now Mm -hmm. yeah marvel has it for everything how can star wars not have it it is frustrating and i i hear different people give different stories um and and i i think i don't know does it come down to the licensing because marvel doesn't get paid x amount out of the hasbro kitty while lucasfilm and disney still do i mean that's what i have heard so is that the only thing that's holding it up because i I know i work in logistics i know a lot of things are caught up at ports and on containers and all that out on the ocean but it hasn't been held i mean it's not just star wars stuff held up out there right there's got to be other things held up out there so i know the, the what if logistics. series toys were in the shelf the week that that series came out on disney plus yep they were on the shelf and like i said today yeah. Yeah. i was just in walmart and they were rearranging the aisles and making the star wars section twice as big why it's empty yeah, there's it's absolutely empty. nothing there yeah it's It's a great question, and honestly, in the next few weeks, while we don't have a Disney Plus show, we should probably sit down and invite, you know what, I'm going to. I'm going to invite some Hasbro people, I don't even care who it is, local guys, people at the headquarters, and I'm just going to say, will you come on and talk to us? Just give us a rundown. It's still a year away from the season two Mandalorian figures being released. A year. Yeah, yeah. What Kenobi Black Series? What are they going to come out in like 2028 or something? Come on, man! That was in mid drink when you said. Go ahead. I've been, you know, I've, I wanted uh, just you know there to be some Boba Fett's with the you know the tarnished armor, and you know finding one of those is a nightmare. You know, and you have to go to all like Walmart's you know exclusive or something oh. release you know, day and compete with people that they're going to buy them all up to sell them online. It's like, that's what the world's come to. Don't even, you know what, the, the word you just said, exclusives, whether it's Target, Walmart, um, I don't even care who else. There's Amazon. There's Amazon, Best Buy. If it's an exclusive, you might as well forget it. It's sold out in 15 seconds. You're never going to see it at a store. You have to buy it from somebody else who's already bought it. That's the world yeah. we live in this ridiculous it's a shame but you're right like you guys have young kids and i guarantee you can go in right now and buy uh paw patrol you can go in and buy doc mcstuffins or whatever whatever kids are watching today i guarantee you can see it but when it comes to star wars no such luck so i i will throw my hands up but you know what you've given me that's i'm going to spend the next few weeks doing nothing but contact people related to hasbro related to the star wars line and i'm going to see if someone will come on Rule the galaxy. That, just talk to us. That yeah. episode will be titled "The Sarlacc Pit." <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come um, on, let's go. Oh. Let's grill them. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, I'll give one last plug. Um, we do, we do have merchandise. We do now have hats, shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve tees, and crew sweatshirts. Um, they're all available on Etsy. If you go on Etsy and you just type in rule the galaxy, all one word, no separations, just rule the galaxy. It'll pull up our shop. 
we've already had people have theirs delivered. Sweatshirts and hoodies have been delivered. So if you want any of that gear, it's very reasonably priced. Just to let you know, while we've got Mark on, uh, you know, I know everybody out in California where he is is probably looking for Rule of the Galaxy gear. Uh, there you go. Etsy, just type in Rule of the Galaxy, one word. And Mark, I will tell you, as we start Book of Boba Fett, the finale in the name of honor, um, the the last time we had you on, our our numbers went through the roof, and and we had so many listeners from the state of Oregon, the state of Washington, and the state of California. There must be a huge contingent of uh, Boba Fett fans in those states because it was wow. like, wow, here we are in Indiana, and we usually get most of our listeners from the eastern half of the United States. But yeah. but when your episode came on, uh, like I said, Washington, yes. Oregon, and California just went right through the roof so either you've got a fan club or the boba fett fan club is tight out there so look we got him right here boba that's fett with the right. home that's just great i love the numbers <laughs> keep it down bookie oh gosh um so yeah. guys God, look, i look. wish that mine had come in <laughs> yeah his helmet's still <laughs> not in um <laughs> I, I will say this, Mark Mark did a really good job of discussing episodes one through six before we start into number seven here, and I think we, we all agree it's a good show. Uh, I personally really, really like this finale. Yes, was I throwing things out there saying, oh, maybe this could happen, maybe that could happen. Yeah, but it was just for fun. I was really excited with the way it ended because honestly, when it ended, I felt like you're leaving me want more. And you're leaving things in a good spot where I'm like, the sky's the limit on a lot of this stuff. So <clears throat> I'll just let you guys hit your your some topics you want to talk to out of this show. And then then let's go through it kind of piece by piece and, and chronologically. But Mark or, or Alfie or D-Doc, either one of you, just start in what you thought about this show, some things that stood out to you, and, and we'll go through it step by step. So go right ahead. Who wants to go first? We can have silent pause. It's good. <laughs> you Sorry, go. I, I want you, I want I Mark to go first. Mark, you go first. You start us in. I go first. Okay. I go first. Who talks first? You talk right. first. I talk first. I mean, I, I'm probably repeating myself. Sorry if I am. But at the end of you know the second season of Mandalorian, you know, I I was, I just wanted more of the same. And basically, like you said, the, when the first one came out, it was jarring. It was like, wait. If I was if I wasn't Disney if I wasn't Disney, because Disney think about dollars, if I was anybody else, I might release the first two, because the first two kind of together set everything up kind of thing. So you, at the end of the first episode, it was like what what I felt like the, the sidewalk just ended. Wait a minute, what, what's happening? You know, and uh, and a lot of people were kind of like just off balance at the end of that first episode. They were like felt like. Okay, there's stuff happening. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm keeping up. I'm, I'm invested. I want, I want more. I want to know more. Um, but like I said before, I, the thing that I found the most jarring was the whole back to tank flashback thing. I, I mm -hmm. wish it was being started about him. And th there was one line when he says about he spent years in the Sarlacc. And I'm like, how can he spend... It must have felt like years, but I would have thought your your oxygen would last between like twenty four and seventy two hours, and then you'd wake up, like after all the fires have burned out. So yeah, the, the husk is there. Mm -hmm. I would, I thought when he said the being I've been the years I spent in there, I'm like what? How did? And then your air run out, and you had to quickly grab the. Yep. You know, it's like I don't know. <clears throat> it bothered me that line. It, it still does. I wish he had never said it. <laughs> well, that's my, that's my that's my overview of the first one. Where I was on the first one. Okay. They gave you so much. They gave me the thing is they gave you so much stuff you love along the way. It's hard because like there's so many details that you they put in you. They are oh, I love you for that. Oh, and I love you for that. Okay, check mark for that. Check mark for that. So yeah, when they mess up, you're kind of like. But it wasn't, it wasn't the same kind of fulfillment I got at the end of episode one of Mandalorian season mm -hmm. one and season two, where I was like, <sighs> okay, pilot sold it to me. Let's go. You know, didn't have that punch. So, so did episode 
seven hit you in the right spot compared to where we started way back with episode one. Of oh, Boba yeah, Fett. yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, it was to the point where at the end of episode six, when I was missing Boba Fett like crazy, just saying, I'm not biased, but yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, if, if it had been Mandalorian, no, I'm saying if it had been the Mandalorian and Mandalorian wasn't an episode, everyone would be worse. Mandalorian, you know? Where's the Mandalorian? You know, and so would I. Because it's the Mandalorian. So, right, yeah, right. maybe they do it in books, but I don't know of many like cinematic uh, kind of departures from, if you're going to call it the Book of Boba Fett, you really kind of have to follow him, kind of like the same way as if you watch Back to the Future, the camera follows Martin McFly from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. <laughs> Anytime it comes away is when he's in the trunk. The rest of the time, it's like a little, it just hovers. It looks in long shots, wide shots over his shoulder. Never leaves him because it's the Marty McFly story. And right. I wanted to follow Boba Fett more than we did. And as much as I love Mandalorian, I was like, why not call this Mandalorian 3? I, I don't know. Yep. Why, why mix it up and pull us out for the book? But why, why not make it like a, why not make it the, the, the Bounty Hunter stories or something? The Book of the Bounty Hunters or something? I don't know. Why well, call it Book of Boba Fett? And then I missed Depart. him. I missed him in episode five and six. So at the end of episode six, I was like, you better deliver on episode seven. And for me, they, they did. So all's forgiven. <laughs> I love you again. Well, I, but I it was close. I, yeah. I think you they mentioned it. I, I think you mentioned it earlier when we were talking about it. And I'll, I'll go to Alfie and D Doc here in a second, but I think this this episode with the fulfillment was we got the spaghetti western yeah. hit 100% home. We got him being a, a badass bounty hunter for parts of it. And then we got the sometimes Godzilla, sometimes big King Kong scenes with the Rancor where I felt like, whoa, that was just like watching a Godzilla film where he was fighting with that droid. And then when he climbs that tower, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now am I watching a King Kong movie? So you have Western, space, bounty hunters, King Kong, Godzilla, all mixed in with, with you know, the Mandalorian and, and Boba Fett. So it, it, it tickled my fancy all the way through it. I thought it was great. I, I love the throwback. Well. What's Cad that? Cad Bane. Oh, Cad Bane. That yeah. whole moment, it was like, I, I, do, I wanted to get the guppy stick. I'm like, use it, use it. <laughs> ah. So Alfie, D-Doc. Some of the things that hit you guys in this episode that, that stood out, either one of you. You can go ahead, Alfie. Go ahead, Alfie. Uh, the one thing that literally stood out to me in this episode was, you know, Mando's speech to him about honor. And I'm, you know, I made a promise to you, so I'm sticking it out. I kind of wish we would have had more time, you know, again, I know this was a big complaint about you know the characters but like the mods in group in you know black chrysanthemum kind of really would have liked you know those two episodes as great as they were with man the mandalorian that would have been nice to establish more of a relationship as a complete unit you know yeah that the scene of them on the jetpacks i mean that mm. was that was Battlefront 2, that was every Marvel comic I read as a kid. I mean, that was that was complete fulfillment for young Alfie right there. Seeing them flying around, you know, shooting blasters when they're being chased by the droids, using the jetpacks to move left and move right real fast. And the yes, we got the Western and everything you guys mentioned, but that Michael Corleone moment of here's my offer nothing you know that uh a lot i mean how much more can you pack into one episode you're right i forgot to mention the godfather and all those things i was mentioning yeah. you're right i call it i call it a firework display it, <laughs> yeah yeah so many fireworks go off and it was just like great at the end they kind of like you know fennec hadn't got a moment so she had a moment at the end yeah. mm -hmm. bang 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 stab oh, oh. Over. wow leaves 
and, Drop and the microphone leaves seeing the hanging of the of the mayor i'm like yeah, I, I didn't see that one coming and the, and the feet great <laughs> yes. so uh d doc i'll let you go and then I, i've got a few things written down here that i'll hit go ahead yeah i mean fennec finally got to do what she wanted to do the whole show she just wanted to kill all of them and she finally <laughs> did it you know and she did it in a pretty crazy way i when when she when the rope dropped down and pulled up i'm like no way she's gonna hang this guy and then the feet kept dangling i was like oh crap <laughs> like she she yeah. went in right there but yeah. yeah overall i um overall i was satisfied with the episode i mean I I pretty much agree with uh, with what Mark and Alfie are saying. I mean, I felt like as this show was building this storyline with these new characters that we started to enjoy, it did cut to Mandalorian and kind of cut away from their storyline. And they brought them all back here, which it's amazing to see Din and Boba together. Um, uh, the, what I want to tell myself is, like we've been saying, this is Mandalorian 2.5. And this is not the last time we're going to see Boba Fett. That's the, I, I think that they established his crew and he's just going to be part of this universe now. And that's what I'm hoping for. I, I don't think his story is over. I, I don't either. Um, one thing that I want to go to, well, two things. One, and we'll talk, I'll let you guys round table this. The X-Wing flying in and we all thought it's Luke dropping off grogu and instead it's r2 flying grogu in yeah. blew me away because i was not i was like oh what you know and and that one really got me but then my my daughter who's 19 not the biggest star wars fan it, it's something that she's accustomed to being around because she's got me as her dad and her brother who you know we're both star wars fanatics but she actually sat down and watched this episode she said she loved um and I, I apologize on the names, Sophie Thatcher, Sophie Hatcher, which what which one is it, guys? Hatcher or Thatcher? I think it's Thatcher. Okay, Thatcher. Thatcher. She, she loved that character. So here's a mod who my 19 year old daughter thought was really cool. She loved Pelimoto and the Major Domo, how they were kind of goofy and silly comedy playing off each other. And she's like, I think they're going to be a couple. She's like, I you know I. So here she's loving. <laughs> Grogu show up, Sophie Thatcher as a, in her character as a mod, uh, Pelimoto and the Major Domo together, and then she absolutely lost it when Grogu jumped into the Mandalorian's arms, and then later puts the Rancor to sleep, and then passes out and takes a nap right next to him. She here she was going, I this is awesome, and I'm thinking that's exactly what Star Wars and Disney is wanting. They know they've got a guy like me roped in. But to have a 19-year-old young lady see this and go, wait a minute, I don't know what's going on, but I really like these characters and this little story going on. It just blew me away to have her see that and go, that's really cool. And I'm thinking, well, good, maybe I can talk her into watching more things like this, you know. So anyway, that was just my two cents. Um, hit, hit one of you guys hit another point that stood out to you. Alfie, I'll let you start. Watching it the second time, or more like the third the advancements that they've gotten with Grogu in the series, the the detail, the movement, you know, the way his eyes were moving when he was using the force. I was pretty blown away by that. Yeah. I mean, for if that's still just a puppet, that is some amazing work right there. And I agree with, with her about the mods because I think they really – had something to say in this series with them as, you know, coming out after the empire and being, you know, such a drastic shift from the gray and black with the bright colors in the robotics. And I really just would have liked to seen them developed a little more. Correct. Cause I thought they were great in this episode. I just wanted them a bit dustier. <laughs> The fact that they, they had that shiny chrome in tattooing, I, I wasn't buying it. I was like, you would be, that's all your day, polishing your, your bike. Maybe they've got an un unlimited pass at the local car wash. They got really I mean, good like wax. I, <laughs> that's some got space wax. wax. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Some um, great dragon wax. <laughs> I, think, I think in this episode, Alfie, you know, now that you brought it up, we start off in a burned up 
uh, Garza's sanctuary. So the gangster part of it where the mob would have come in and blown up a casino or a, you know, a, a bar like that. One well, RIP Garza. We all miss you. We wish you were mm. still with us. Um, they see the, the mayor say, I didn't, I didn't want that. That's not what I was saying. You know? So once you make that deal with the devil, it's hard to turn back around. Right. I mean, he, he was making the deal with the pikes thinking oh, I'm set. This is easy. I'm, I'm going to let them do all the tough work and I'll just be mayor. And then they go bomb people that he has a relationship with in his town. Uh, I, I thought that was a good couple things at the beginning as well. And, and I felt bad for the Gamorians. God love them. They fought. Yeah. Yeah. And to hear the squeals as they went over the side of that cliff was just painful. Um, the, the Gamorians turned out to be a lot better than even what they were in Return of the Jedi to me. I, I thought that was a really cool setup with them. So just more of my two cents worth there. Any any more to- topics you guys want to hit or or things that happened that you really liked or disliked? Floor I mean, is open. Who, who didn't love the Gamorian guards after the original trilogy? It's like you love those guys. So the fact that they were in this as well, and then they had even their little helmets looking like that, it's like, oh, yeah, perfect, you know, and seeing them, you know, wrestling or battling with their vibro axes, like, you know, we've really been given some Gamorian alien love. Mm-hmm. All the aliens that you, that you fall in love with, you know, because for some reason you pick the aliens out, I guess because they're alien, you know, <laughs> you've you got human characters, but the aliens... Right. Chewbacca, I kind of love with Chewbacca as soon as I saw Chewbacca. And uh, yeah, it's just, we've really kind of spoiled. There's been a lot of fan service, but in a really kind of clever way, like, you know, even with using, I, I really wasn't a fan of the original Naboo fighter. I much prefer this being up version. I much prefer like the, the, the Mandalorian silver Beskar version, you know. Um, and, you know, for them to put, Little Grogu in the turret. I mean, it's genius. <laughs> it is. Tap in. I mean, come on. We love that guy. We love that guy. You know, Mark, you've mentioned how Disney Disney knows what they're doing, looking when it comes to money. And and I, when I saw that ship, what a week or two back, and I saw that space on top, I was like, do you know how many of those they're going to sell as a combo, giving you a Mandalorian, a Grogu in that bubble that. All the ones they had left over from the, the prequels that they can now repaint and uh, restructure and just throw a Grogu in that in that spot right there, that's that's just going to sell like hotcakes. Maybe in twenty twenty eight. I would have bought two of them today. <laughs> you, you that's what killed me, man. <laughs> printing their own stuff. Do what? You get better service from people printing their own stuff than you do any other official online stuff. That, that's what I'm learning from uh, being on TikTok now, honestly, is I uh, honestly two days after that episode aired, I saw uh, I, I know we're friends with him on Twitter. Uh, his name is Damon Kenobi. Yeah, he already had he already had the Starfighter printed, ready to paint. And I'm just like, I, I messaged him. I said, yo, I might be asking you for one of those eventually, because that's <laughs> the best way to get it. Honestly, yeah. it, it is true. And you don't have to wait a year for it. It's the same as the merchandise from this. The official right. merchandise from where we are at the podcast. Don't have to wait a year, do you? No. There you go. Why, why is there all the this commercial. new Batman? <laughs> Give you that free. You know what? I'll have, you know what? I'll have you record that, and I'll, I'll blast it out to everybody. <laughs> so um, there, there's no Batman, Batman merch on the shelves. <laughs> You're right, D Doc. There. I mean, the amount of Batman stuff I've already seen in Target and Walmart, and I'm thinking it's not even out yet. I love Batman, but. Can I get the same kind of love for the Star Wars stuff? So um, the amount of He-Man stuff that's on the shelves. Oh. I mean, I love He-Man. We grew up with that stuff. But I mean, you talk about really selling to a niche audience there to have yeah. that much stuff in the store. Yeah. He-Man fans, Star Wars fans. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They're not equally balanced, I don't think. I mean, uh, Steve Glosson from Geek Out Loud can only buy so much He-Man. That's I mean, he, he will run out. And he can't he can't buy all of it. Um. So we mentioned earlier the Fett and Bane showdown, and I felt like we were going to get it early, and really it just became just a really cool interaction and back and forth, and and then we did get it later. But in the first one, I love the terminology they're using. If that isn't a quack to 
calling a stifling, stifling slimy. I, what? I mean, I was like, what the heck? And I'm going to have to go look that up. It's probably on Wikipedia somewhere, but, um, but you guys have to admit we we've been thinking about since Dave Filoni said, Oh yeah, back in Clone Wars, we had a Boba Fett came a you know, Cad Bane fight, you know, to the death and we never got a chance to make it. We were all waiting for this. Once we saw yeah. Cad Bane show up recently, we were like, could it happen? Could yeah. we get Boba Fett Cad Bane? And, and we got it. And I, both of them together, I thought, made it fantastic. And they were both completely different, completely different, but equally balanced, like equally strong. You know, yeah, he's not the quicker shot as Cad, but he's got the advantage in, you know, you're likely to hit his armor. So, yep. Alfie, yeah. was that, was that what you were looking for? Were you thinking, I want to see Boba and Cad even as early as we saw it right here? I didn't, I, I thought, I thought because we just saw him so late, you know, mm -hmm. the very end of episode six, like, you know, just before the finale begins, I really was hoping that he would be in it and not like some, some of these other kind of, you know, we saw the, the legs of Boba Fett when he comes over to Fennec at the end of episode five of Mandalorian. Yep. And then it's just a glimpse. And I didn't want that to be like what the Cad Bane was. I didn't want it to be like a, something for the next episode i wanted them to like finish this you know finish it settle it yep and so yeah so very pleased very pleased good good d doc and alfie were you guys pleased with the the fet bane battle 100 percent. i i really enjoyed it you know it, it had everything there it, the continuation of the clone wars the live action series the spaghetti western you know the showdown in the streets the him talking down to him like you know boba said i'm not a little boy anymore mm. but he's still i'm gonna give you one more lesson it was pretty perfect and you know notice when his hat came off he did have the steel plate on his head so it's still a possibility that in feloni's mind that that duel did happen in the clone wars do, do we think that any of the payoff came from him having, like for me, as soon as I saw him on the ground and his helmet came off and then you could see the gaffy stick sticking up, I, wa I watched that thinking he's still that kick-ass cool bounty hunter deep down, but he's got that depth I talked about earlier. He's got that, he relaxed, he concentrated. And he thought to himself, go to that training that I got from the Tuscans. And he was able to take him out with a stick when this guy's holding the gun to him right there. I, I felt like that was a big payoff there because he could still be the, the cool guy that he is, but just approach it in a different way. Yeah, that, that what you just said there is one of the things that really drew me in was the fact that he was he had to re he had to reinvent himself as somebody that wasn't relying on his gadgets and long range that like he was, you know, he was going to go in there with this guffy stick and he just became more of a complete warrior for me. Mm -hmm. It just, it was everything that he was missing from his established. And what we saw in the Mandalorian that episode six of the second season, where he did with the guffy stick and the storm he was just like, Oh man, it's like, I wanted to see, I was hoping I was kind of disappointed how much he got beaten up at the beginning of the season. <laughs> and he's always in and out of the, the Buxer tank. It was like, this, this isn't the guy that we just was with the, the Guffy stick. And like, this isn't the guy. Like, wh where's that guy? How come these guys with shields are, are kicking their ass? Basically, uh, sorry. <laughs> language. You're fine. We're, but, uh, we're, we're allowed to. No, okay. no FCC standards. Just, here. Just, uh, they've been a donkey, <laughs> uh, a tattooing donkey, that is. Um, but he seems to like be in and out of that tank, and, and like I, like I said, I, I was mm. if I had if I had my say and magic here to happen, I would have had the Tuscan Raider story, and then what happened to again Slave One back, kind of tied it into even Episode Six with that temple mm -hmm. of him meeting Injury or whatever. Touch on that maybe even see it from a different perspective or after it or something. 
And then, you know, I'm kind of disappointed how I wanted, what I loved about watching The Mandalorian is that you got to see a Mountie Hunt a bit. Mm -hmm. you know? And I just, that's what I loved about the Spaghetti Westerns. You followed Clint Eastwood, you know, through his travels and stuff. And I wanted more travels with Boba Fett. So when he settled down at the very beginning, I was kind of, damn. I wanted some, I wanted some travels before yeah. settling down. To settle down, I'm mm -hmm. going to take, I'm going to come in, this is my throne. It's like, that would be a cool, I understand that's a good hook. That's a good teaser for, to keep you on the edge of your seat for a year, you know? But for me, I, I wouldn't have minded if he had, if we'd seen him bounty hunt. He he's back, but he's, he's learned things now. He's kind of learned from the Tuscans. He's seen a different way of life. As soon as he's mistreated and treated like a expendable gun for hire and not a person, and not someone who's kind of respected and given you know honor and you know. So when he said good to dinge in saying you, know, you buy into that bantapoda or whatever yeah. said, and it, when both fets are good i was like thank god he said that because that's what you wanted him to say yeah you want yeah. him to be the honorable person underneath like yeah he kind of comes off sometimes he, you know he lets his temper get away with him and make decisions but underneath he's an honorable guy and he stood by dinge in said no i'm gonna see this through to the end and they got the the respect back and i was like ah well, I mean, yeah, and, and not only that, but to see that the the throne that he was sitting on made so much of its money from the spice, and he was willing to get rid of that so he could give the people of Mos Espa a good life and a good city and things like that. Again, not only the conversation he had with Din, but then to think the mods are looking at him and standing up to him and saying, "Don't don't run away from our city. Don't don't leave us hanging." And he cut that deal like, hey, that's perfectly fine. Let's go. Let's get rid of this, uh, you know, the spice stuff. Let's let's go make this a legitimate city here. So I thought that was really cool yeah. all the way around. And you're right. The honor and boom, in the name of honor. Let's think about that. He and Din Djarin both showing that in this show, right? I mean, they were, then you had the people from Freetown showing their honor, showing up and Backing up this whole situation. You're familiar with the, the Deadwood series, yeah? Everyone's seen Deadwood. Mm -hmm. Same thing, same character, you know, it's the Bullock character. Like, like you know, he's, he's, he's like, someone's, if I'm not going to do it, who's going to do it? Yeah. Like, I don't really want to do it, <laughs> but I hate seeing people treated this way, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it at some point, maybe we'll work something out. But I, I liked that kind of, Feel, feel I got. Go ahead, D Doc. Uh, I totally agree with everything Mark just said. That was like awesome. Basically, everything you just said right there. Um, there was there was one, there was one particular shot that I don't know if you guys noticed during this standoff with um Cad Bane and Boba. Did you did you notice that one shot when it had the sun in the background and it was the side angle of Cad Bane? How amazing it looked. Out. Yeah. It was, yeah, when it was washed out with the sand and everything, I was just like, man, this is, it was just an incredible shot. Just, it only lasted for about two or three seconds, but it just made for that scene. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it's funny because I'm sitting here, I have my little original Boba <laughs> Lego right here. And it's funny because when you take off his helmet, he looks freaking pissed off, you know, and it's like <laughs> with Legos, sometimes they put uh, another face on the back for when they're happy. And I feel like I need to have like a, a melancholy Boba Fett on the back yeah. of this uh, head now. Yeah, you know, awesome. it's it's you, you definitely do uh, view them a bit differently uh, after this series, you know. Yeah. Alfie, hit me with something. Hit me with something from the episode, because I, I think we've got some things to grow off from this episode right here. So. One thing I really liked was the scorpion droids, you know, that unused concepts from Attack of the Clones, you know, once again, mining, you know, those drawings, those concepts and coming up with a really cool droid. Yeah. I also wonder, you know, about his change of heart about the spice in, well, really, this whole series has been him having one foot, you know, in the door. Mm -hmm. And does he really want to be a crime boss? And, you know, and that's kind of what Finnick was guiding him along, you know, in the beginning saying, 
hey, if you want to do this, this isn't the right way. You need to do it this way. And he was conflicted on that. But was it the betrayal of the other bosses that really had him go all in that, okay, yeah, screw crime. I'm going to clean the city up. Yeah, I mean. I wonder if they hadn't turned would he had a had a different attitude or was it just the fact that you know mando saying i got your back and i'm here to the end that and i mean how much did cad bane actually saying you know the pikes were the ones that killed right your tuscan family not not that biker group you took out but it was actually the pikes so i mean you've got those people turning on him cad bane telling him that the spice thing with the mods he he had a lot of things that he was going right back and forth with he also has the whole story angle of why he had to change his attitude a little bit you know to fit into this star wars avengers team a little bit better <laughs> you know you had to have a little attitude adjustment i think they did a good job in creating a story of yeah this is how boba fett came to be more of a honorable good guy He's always been honorable. I've said that before. You know, he didn't just work for the Empire. He worked for people who paid him and didn't really go out of his way to do anything but collect his bounty. Sure, if he got in his way, but I've never really seen him as a true bad guy. Uh, Yeah. See, when when they said, uh, when we got that teaser, the book of Boba Fett, when they said that, my understanding, when I saw the word book, that single word made me think and expect that we were going to see a whole collection of stories, all of the bounties that he's been on that have contributed to why we see him in Empire and think, oh, oh that's Boba Fett, you know, you, you yeah. know he's, the way he knows who he's dealing with. So I was, I built my hopes up wanting this, this thing that I, I'm never going to get probably, but I so want that series. I want I want the the, the the old book of Boba Fett. I completely agree with you because I kind of expected, you know, my wish would be some of the Shadows of the Empire story. Yeah, or see the, Dengar, or yeah, see yeah. Or, you know, encounter with uh, IG-88 or something. You know? I expected some of the flashbacks to be flashing back to those bounties. Yeah. You know, give us some of the one thing that always stood out to me as Boba Fett as a character was him getting right in Vader's face. The only character in the original trilogy who, when Vader spoke, didn't cower back. Yeah. He got, you know, I wanted to, I still want to see in live actions, just like you're saying, what made him that powerful, that respected. Listen to that. Hopefully, John and, and Dave are watching this because. If, if you do want this series, I'll make it for you, John and Dave, right? <laughs> okay. I think we got the guy who can do it. You're right. Um, but you guys hit on it, that keyword book, because being that, you know, I got the Italian last name and I know plenty of guys who used to, you know, do some things, a little uh, things falling off back of trucks and things like that. When you're, when you were in the gang world and when you were in the bookie and gambling world, you kept a book. It was a book of your clients, a book of your debts, a book of things you write. So you're, you're right. That, that initial thought was, well, this is his book. So these are the bounties he went and got. Here's the money he collected. You know, you're right, but that's not what we got. It was a totally different, they took us in a totally different way. I I will say this before we kind of tie up this and start looking at the future where this can go. Um, I think, I think they, did a good job and i'm happy that we didn't just get a two-hour movie of boba fett because it probably would have been cut up bits and pieces of the last three or four episodes you know of the of of this episode and episode four basically of, of this right when the tide started turning and this because they wouldn't have had time to put all that backdrop in of of where he was and where he came from and, and the changes that happened in him as a person. You just can't fit that into a two hour movie. So having it over seven episodes of 35 to 50 minutes, I'll take that with, with the warts and the different things that were good and bad instead of just one two hour how, movie about it. How many, how many were in Mandalorian? It was more than seven, wasn't it? Or was um, it just seven? 
It was eight. Was it eight episodes in eight, eight. season? Oh, it's eight per season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt kind of like a bit denied an episode in the book of Boba <laughs> I knew there's going to be seven at one point. Someone said it, and I was like, it really felt like jip to me. Like, Damn it. Um, I just I want wonder... to say before, I want to say before we move on, I, I just have concerns about Max Rebo. He looks like he's had plastic surgery or something. <laughs> he's just not the same guy anymore. Poor Max. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. You got it. Go ahead, Alfie. I wonder how much, uh, you know, the whole craziness of the past few years led into the structure of the show as far as covid and restrictions and stuff getting shut down was this you know a melding of something they got started with of season three of mandalorian and did the best they could in making one series out of you know who knows how much they got finished it's a good question i You know, I've often thought, and I've heard other podcasters say this, I'm wondering if they decided to do this thing about Boba Fett, this small series about Boba Fett, because in all actuality, the original story they probably had in line for somebody like Boba Fett was the Mandalorian story, right? Let's Mm -hmm. not make Mandalorian, could that have been a Boba Fett story that they said, oh, we got to go in a different direction now, and... Let's make it about a whole new character with a whole new line, but his coolness, his whistling birds, his, you know, connection back to the Mandalorians. Was that originally supposed to be Boba Fett? And they said, okay, we've got another plan. Let's, let's shift this, you know, so we can put a new younger guy in there. I I don't know, but it just seems like there could have been some of that. Go ahead, Mark. I just got one, one, I had a suspicion that the same thing, I was thinking, and my, my suspicion was that because Boba Fett has so much sensitivity attached to him, you know, a lot of people you know, mm-hmm. want very something specific, you know, and you can't please everybody. You know, you can't, whatever, if you're a DJ, it doesn't matter what music you put on, someone wants something different. Right. And so it's a big ask. And so I think making it Mandalorian was a smart move because yeah. if, it didn't, if it didn't work, it doesn't matter because it's not Boba Fett. But it did work, and and they kind of like. For me, Mandalorian is the Boba Fett we associate with the trilogy, and we have a new Boba Fett now that came out of Sarlacc. You know, he went in skinny and came out just a little bit less skinny than when he went in. <laughs> Somehow, I, know, without, I like it without eating anything. So, so let's let's look at the end. We were talking about where it's taken us to across seven episodes, and yes. There could have been some more depth. We could have learned more about some of these characters or or seen Boba more in, in uh, episode five and six. But I thought it ended really well when he looked at Finnick, which, by the way, we already said Finnick is just an awesome character. I love the way Finnick's going in this. But when he looks at her and says, we're not cut out for this, you know, he knows I did something good. I feel better about myself. But this really isn't me. And to say who, if if we're not the ones who, she says, if we're not the ones to do it, who is it? And then to see Cobb Banth in the back to tank, who I think he can easily say, we honor you. We trust you that the, you know, the people of this, of Mas Espa and Mas Pelgo, now Freetown, would trust him. I I personally think they're going to leave it in his hands with the mods. I think they're going to say mods you and Cobb Band run the show here. Uh, and and I think, like Alfie said, you're going to look at Boba Fett and Finnick go in and join that, that, you know, Avengers force, whether it's with Mandalorian, whether it's with Ahsoka, whether it's with whoever, to take on some new challenge in front of them. So that's just my two cents on the Boba character. I think, Mark, we are going to get some of that kick-ass and take name Boba, like we did at the end with Cad Bane and and we did in that episode in Mandalorian where he was destroying those stormtroopers. I think we're going to get more of that in future episodes uh, of whatever series they're a part of. Yeah. So, yeah. That's my two cents. Alfie. Yeah. I really liked the way this ended. I think it ended on a good note. And like you said, I, I agree that, you know, they're kind of setting up for you to think that Cobb Vance will be the one to take over. So that frees up Finnick and Boba to go off on, 
wherever Den needs them to go. And I just going to throw it out there. I think this is going to lead to back to the legends where Boba will be the one that is the Mandalore. Really? Yeah. I think he's the mythosaur that the armor was talking about. Huh? I, I mean, I would go for that. I would, I would, whether Den or Boba became the head of Mandalore, I think that would be awesome. The warrior ways Boba could go there and show him how cool it is to, to be the Mandalorian that he is. So I, I love that idea. I think that would be great. And we, we definitely need to see that still, right? I mean, we need to go back to Mandalore at some point in time. So uh, Dave, uh, D-Doc, he, he, we, I think we get some, some different uh, views over there, which I want to hear. Uh, no, I, I, I agree with you guys. I mean, I'm shaking my head just from listening to just all these. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just like to put my <laughs> mind into yours. But um, I like I said before, I finished this episode and came right to the podcast. So like just having some time to really think about the series as a whole, like to think if it's a good show or not, how many memorable, memorable moments did you have? And I mean, as far as star Wars go, we had a freaking shit, li- a, a bunch of, uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a you bunch of, uh, we had a bunch of memorable moments from this, uh, this episode, this show, you know, we, we had Luke and everything. We had Ahsoka, we had Mando, we had Boba. And I mean, they all kind of wrap together. And I mean, if you want it to be fully about Boba, I mm-hmm. understand that where my, you might have some beef with it. Like I could see that because it, is it what I envisioned? Not at all. It, it, but I, am I pleasantly surprised with where they went with it? I am. I mean, I think I, I, I just keep thinking about Clone Wars. I, th- I keep thinking that this is all part of a bigger picture. And uh, I'm I'm not looking at this show with finality that like this is the end of this story. It's obviously Boba is still going to be a part of this universe. And I think there's going to be, you know, there might be two episodes about Boba in the next season of Mandalorian. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Alfie and then Mark. Yeah. To go off with uh, what D-Doc's saying, that's completely what I see with every series going forward outside of Kenobi, I fully expect like Ahsoka to get two or three episodes to get you caught up on her character. And then boom, we're going somewhere off to combine with the main storyline of the Mandalorian. Same with, if there's ever a Bo-Katan series, I would expect it to be the same exact way. Give you a few episodes to get you caught up. And then, Hey, this is, we're tying right back into the main storyline. I like that. Go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, it's kind of funny being in my position because going into the beginning of the series, uh, however they treated Boba Fett was going to affect me at the end of it. You know, it's going to affect the way I'm treated. Uh, it's going to affect you know, the way people think about Boba Fett. I, so I, I'm, I, I was relieved, pleasantly relieved at the end. It was like a wild ride for me. It was a very wild roller coaster, which is great. Now it's over. And so I'm sure that my second, third viewing is going to just make that roller coaster more enjoyable. And, you know, the, you end up enjoying the dips as well as the swells, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really pleased the way that everything got tied up at the end. We're on a, on a positive note because I, I, I was, to be honest, a couple of days before it aired, I was, it kind of dropped to me, like, what if, he, what if he kills him? What if he does kill him off? Like, you know, and, and makes it official, you know? Because mm. there's always that option with Cad Bane. So it was like, you know, the surprise. And then, you know, and then it could be something that, oops, it's Wookiee with That's his right. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what was that? You're fine. Yeah. No, um, you're right. That is scary to think about. I mean, just- yeah. And so, I, I'm, I'm, I was relieved when, you know, when he finally flips it around with the guffy stick and I'm like, phew, phew. <laughs> worried. Why? Because it's funny because it, it does. It's like as a, as a fan, when you were, uh, as, a, as a boy, I, you know, have this kind of like uh, identification with the characters because I wanted one. And then ever since, you know, jumping into the suit, you are, you have one kind of, you know, people you know i'm lucky i'm lucky i can say i am boba fan get away with it you know um like to be those one of those people that can um but 
it's funny because when you're watching that, you're it's almost like you're in some of his hands a little bit. So I was really pleased the way they tied up in the end. I'm really pleased it ended positively and that he survived it and that they gave me uh, everything I was looking for. The rest of the six episodes they gave me in episode seven. Everything I was looking for, but episode four, though, episode four is still ah, slave one goodness. Oh. <laughs> that was a great episode. Oh, You're right. Oh. Fulfillment. See, seeing the Sarlacc pit and all that, yeah. I mean, oh, and yeah. yeah, I feel better now. It's like it's <laughs> the weight off because the second most thing, the first thing was like, oh, how cool is it to be Boba's vet? That's the first asked question. The second most asked question at cons is, uh, did you survive the Sarlacc? <laughs> so my default answer was, well, I'm here, aren't I? You know, come on. I mean, like, seeing is believing, right? But now, not only can I say he survived it, but I get the satisfaction of seeing him destroy it. It's like my arch enemy nemesis is no more. So that's awesome. Relieved. That's absolutely Relieved. Awesome. D Doc, you were gonna say something. Yeah, I, I randomly did just think of one point though. I still think as far as these new Star Wars series go and as what we're getting, I still think the most badass moment was Boba Fett when he showed up in season two of Mandalorian. I still think that was one of the coolest things of the new Boba Fett that we've gotten still. Because like I mean, his fighting was really great in this, like Alfie said with the when, when they when they were flying to, together, that was incredible. But I just still think the way he was turning and shooting on that mountain when he first showed back up, I do still think that tops even the fight scenes of this show. That is one thing I'll say. It was a great one. And it showed the just raw, savage, you know, fighting that he was doing. That was awesome. Alfie. A question for Mark. Talking about cons and, you know, preparing, watching this show, thinking about the future of your stuff have you been practicing that uh little boba fett dance where he was teaching the raiders you know to Wait, ride like the speeders bantha. yeah like, like a bantha. bantha i need to work on that <laughs> i need to work on that for sure hey while we another question for you we'll just see we'll hit you with a couple of questions here one yeah. are, are you are you have you looked into i don't know how this all works but star wars celebration coming up what may of this year it's out in california you're you're in california is there any chance, so people who are listening to us, will you be showing up there? Have you looked into that? Have you been? They have any... the, the Boba Fett fan club asked because they have a booth at the okay. celebration. So they already asked me if, they're not, if they don't want you, we want you on our booth. So I'll, I'll be there. Awesome. That is good. Um, I don't know how many days, but you know, how, I said to them, however many days you want me there, I'll be there. Good, good. Alfie or D Doc, do you guys want to you guys want to hit any closing thoughts? Anything like that of, of things from the show, from where we're going? Uh any anything like that or a question for Mark before we before we close things down? Yeah, I had a quick question for Mark. Go ahead. Uh you mentioned the last time you were on that you were looking into getting a PO box for getting stuff to signs. Have you uh gotten yeah. anything done with that? Yep, yeah, I have it. We can send it. I can. You can. I can send it, and you can put it on your. Uh, I will. Tab, yep. If you want. Uh, so you know. Yeah. Email. Email it over to me, and I will put it in the show notes. So anybody listening, for Mark, yeah. will put the PO box on All there. Done. And, yeah. It was my news resolution, so I did it like you know, the second of January or something like that. I actually just like get out and do it. You lazy. Well, I can tell you, people will be hitting you up and be prepared because they yeah. I mean it's it's good. So go ahead, Alfie. Second part of that question is yes. there, and I don't mean any disrespect if there's not. It's just a question I have because I was kind of leading you with the first question <laughs> for myself. Is there a specific special edition Boba Fett figure from the the movies that was released at that time? No. no. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. I did see, I have been to, when I was in, it was Mexico City. I was at a toy uh, convention. And a guy came up and he had a custom card that had, you know, me, mm -hmm. other, like, but without the helmet on, like behind the scenes. Oh. And it had a custom head and it had a little helmet inside. 
I was like, oh, I, I, I was like, I wanted it so bad. <laughs> you sign it. I was like, oh, I really want it. <laughs> you know what said to me? No, I, I made it for myself. Oh. I only asked I've because. But the... I did, you know my funny story about the power of the false figure? Uh, is, it, that uh, one? is it this one? <laughs> yeah. You know my connection to that figure. Do you? I, Did I say I it? Mine's you, not on the shelf. You might have mentioned it, but go right ahead. Yeah. I'll try and do it really quickly. I don't know how much time we got. But okay. yeah. before I did the blue screen shoot, when I was first putting the, the, the real suit on, but for these summits over in Skywalker uh, Ranch, when I was over there, the very first summit we did in summer of 94, someone came up and said, that guy over there is the president of Canada. I want you to go over there and kind of manhandle him out. And so, you know, we all play acting, you know, so... Went over there, tattoo on the shoulder. As soon as I turned out, kind of like the, hel the helmet. You know, <laughs> got grabbed his hand, put it behind his arm, not too high to hurt him, but escorted him out. Everyone was laughing, you know. Oh, you've been arrested by Boba Fett. It was all the big joke, right? So anyway, so I get into the exit. I let him go. We wasn't allowed to speak. They said we don't want you speaking. I was like, I want to say now. I want to, as you wish. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just do one. Just do one. No, 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 no. You can't say anything. He said, can you come back? Because we, on the original figure, we almost missed the rangefinder. It was only the last minute that they suddenly caught it. And that's why they molded it to in you know, a down position to the helmet for the original fat figure. He said, we don't want to make the same mistake again. Can you come over here and stand while we draw sketches? And so I went over to there. Uh, the guys emptied their cigarettes. You know, this is, you know, California still, still <laughs> cigarette laws at this time. Cigarettes in the pockets, ripped open the cigarette boxes and drew, was drew, drawing. And I had to stand there kind of in the suit while they, the Canada guys had there, or the Hasbro guys I, yeah. I guess, had there. Um, yeah. That's awesome. and, then, and then the figure that came out was this really, you know, the buff, <laughs> like, God damn it. <laughs> You were that buff. They did that off of you. So, okay. Um, well, how come they got a buff C three three P? Come on, uh, explain that one. <laughs> the heck, or they Luke. had a buff. They had Luke. a buff Leia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I tell you what. Um, you know, personally, I can't thank you enough for for being here. It, like I said, we'll put your PO box in the show notes so listeners can do that. Are there other ways? that you want people to reach out to you, social media, what's the best way for people to reach out, just interact with you? I know we, we always bug you on Twitter and, and hit things back and forth. What's, what's the best way or addresses on, on your social media? Uh, I usually go under the moniker at Boba Fett ANHSE, a new hope special edition, ANHSE. People still to this day say, what does it stand for? <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is that the reason I did it in the first place is because people would ask when they had multi, it got to a point where they were getting mm -hmm. Jason Wingreen, voice actor, uh, you know, um, Dickie Beer, stunts. Right. You say, can you put down a New Hope special edition? I was like, really? You want me to write all that? A New Hope. You, sport, you know, and these are, these are things that you, pens that can bleed any moment someone's valued you know they, they it's thousands of dollars in their mind this collection of autographs <clears throat> so somebody came over and they said we have like I don't know, 700 things for you to sign it was like a batch signing and i was like, i'm not going to write a new hope especially and they said well how do you have i just put a and hse and then people asked can you put a and hse after that and so that's why you can find me on at Boba Fett ANHSE. Even my YouTube channel is Boba Space Fett Space ANHSE. That's awesome. Okay. Well, that's good. We got it. So Star Wars fans, look, we've been blessed. We 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 have our regular crew that does a great job. So D Doc and Alfie, always good to have them here. Um, we're gonna tie the show up because we have one and we went 15 or so minutes with Joey to start. So I'm sorry for the long edition, but um, we've had Mark Anthony Austin, the Boba Fett from Star Wars. A New Hope Special Edition, um, so A N H S C. -E. Um, but we, we've had a great episode, great talking about Book of Boba Fett, just some other fun things. We've got a lot of things coming. Uh, it's good. We'll go next week without having to worry about 
talking about an episode, we can have some serious talk. So if you want to email us at rule the galaxy SW gmail.com and say, you've got no guess, uh, that would be great. I'm going to tell you right now that I'm a terrible host because Brent Dykeman, who is one of our, one of our hosts, he sent me uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions that I never even got to while we've been talking because we've hit so many topics that Brent, we love you. I'm sorry. If you would have been here, you could have asked all eight of them, but I'll put them on. We Twitter. got his Yoda video up. We so, do have a you know, Yoda video up. So yeah, we, get, we, we got that on the YouTube forum. So we'll put so. that up and I will put these out each individually on Twitter so people can answer uh, after I post the show so people can answer those questions or, or hear what Brent had to say. But for me, Joe, in the pilot seat, uh, this was chapter 123, by the way. I did not say that at the beginning. Chapter 123 of Rule of the Galaxy for D-Doc, for Alfie, for Mark Anthony Austin. Guys, you've been great. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. And until next week, may the force be with you.